So it is a pleasure to introduce Professor Tugai Kaptanoglu from Bilkan University, both a colleague and a friend, and we know each other since 2001, correct? So, so um, in fact, already 20, 20, 20 years. So, and you, you will speak on shift operators on harmonic invert function, function spaces and from Neumann inequality. So please, Tugai. Okay, thank you. Uh, I hope you can everybody hear me. Uh, as I stated on the front page, this is joint work with Daniel, of course. Uh, and I thank the organizers for inviting me here. Uh, and let me start uh, with my first slide. And this is on, uh, well, the first slide is just a, uh, shouldn't be any surprise to anybody in IOTA. Uh, this is uh, the classical von Neumann inequality. And at the very last slide, I will have a, different version of this. Uh, okay, if T is a contra contraction on a Hilbert space, uh, an operator, and P is a holomorphic polynomial in one complex variable, okay, okay, the norm of P of T is dominated by the uh, supremum of P of Z on the unit disk. Uh, of course, uh, the reason why uh, such a thing is valid is that uh, 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 the uh, norm of the uh, multiplication operator by the polynomial uh, is what we really have over here. Uh, of course, this is for uh, polynomials of one complex variable. And uh, uh, if we have uh, at, uh, more than one uh, operator at hand, commuting uh, tuple of operators and operators, let's say, uh, well, then we have to look at something like a row contraction rather than a contraction. Uh, well, row contraction means uh, this is a contraction as a tuple, basically, in a suitable sense, and I will define it later on anyway. And if you have a, a, a polynomial, P, a holomorphic polynomial again, in uh, n complex variables, then the operator norm of uh, P of T1 through Tn, I mean, if you replace all the variables of the polynomial with uh, the uh, operators T1 through three, Tn, uh, uh, the operator norm of that is less than or equal to the operator norm of uh, P uh, of shift operators. Those are multiplications by the uh, coordinate variables Zjs. But you know, these are the shift operators uh, on, uh, uh, on a certain space, not just any shift operator, but uh, the, the, the the norm here we're considering are the norm of the shift operators uh, with, with a polynomial applied on on the Drury Arvison space. Uh, uh, and Drury Arvison space is a, uh, 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 is a uh, reproducing kernel Hilbert space with this reproducing kernel. And that reproducing kernel uh, uh, has, has a Taylor series expansion in this form, uh, and this form will be important later on. And when n is equal to one, it just turns out to be the hardest space of the unit disk. And uh, in fact, this theorem reduces to the classical von Neumann inequality uh, when n is equal to one. Now, uh, as the title suggests, uh, this talk is about replacing the word holomorphic here by harmonic. I mean, if you have a, of course, when we talk about harmonic functions, we have to look at the multivariable version because uh, the minimum number of variables for harmonic function is two. Uh, but of course, uh, in even variables, maybe you can connect the harmonic functions to holomorphic functions, but with odd number of variables, uh, we have to still uh, invent a lot of new stuff. Uh, and here are uh, some uh, questions, some uh, things that come to mind when we try to replace the word holomorphic by the word harmonic. First of all, what are the shift operators? Uh, okay, when we started this work with Daniel, uh, we didn't even know shift operators uh, haven't been defined on uh, harmonic spaces. Uh, well, that's natural because uh, shift operators are really, you know, multiplication by the coordinate variables. And, uh, uh, and uh, multiplication is not preserved. I mean, uh, uh, harmonicity is not preserved under uh, multiplication. Uh, so we have to devise a way to de define a shift operator. 
And what is the equivalent to the Duraris in space? Well, that was uh, this is even a bigger question. And uh, again, it's one can try uh, 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 reproducing Colonel Hulgin space, but what are these things in the harmonic sense, really? And also, uh, it turns out that after you know, after we did all the work, we realized that. Uh, uh, row contractions, we cannot yet prove uh, an inequality of this form with an arbitrary row contraction. We have to restrict it further. Uh, on the other hand, let me just make a reminder here. Uh, okay, from now on, all the polynomials and functions will be uh, functions of real variables like this, but of course, the functions will be complex values and Hilbert spaces will be complex Hilbert spaces. Uh, I mean, uh, one can also consider real value uh, functions, but uh, there's no need uh, at all. I mean, uh, uh, all the uh, results are true for complex value functions as well. Okay, to uh, for the uh, uh, now, I'd like to uh, look at the first two questions, and uh, they, they all hinge on a lot of uh, detailed information about uh, harmonic functions on especially on the unit ball so we have to look at spherical and zonal harmonics and we have uh, there are the traditional notations pm and hm for the space of complex valued homogeneous and harmonic homogeneous polynomials this is homogeneous polynomials of degree n and this is the harmonic homogeneous polynomials of degree n in many variables uh, the restrictions of uh, Harmonic homogeneous polynomials to unit sphere are called spherical harmonics, but we will also consider spherical harmonics on the uh, unit ball as well. Uh, unit ball of R n, though, not C n. Uh, well, uh, what are zonal harmonics? Uh, if uh, point evaluations, uh, because this is a finite dimensional space, point evaluations are automatically bounded. Therefore, uh, by Ries lemma, uh, uh, you know, we can uh, express the point evaluations as an inner product, and that means we have a reproducing kernel, and that reproducing this kernel is actually called the zonal harmonics, uh, Zm, uh, of the two variables. And here I'm using Greek letters for the points on the uh, sphere. And of course, uh, inner I have to state an inner product as well. On the sphere, the most natural inner product is the L2 of the uh, L2 of the Lebesgue measure on the unit sphere. Uh, well, ZM therefore is a positive definite function, and we can extend it to all the way all uh, to the uh, full ball uh, by homogene homogene homogeneity. Uh, and then the uh, reproducing property takes this form. If Y is a point in the ball, we can recover the uh, harmonic function by integrating against uh, zonal harmonics. Uh, well, there's another uh, little property here. Zonal harmonics are uh, uh, real valued and symmetric in their variables. So it doesn't really matter whether you have x, y, or y, x here. And also they are dominated by this dimension of the HM. Well, there's a formula for this, but we don't uh, need the exact formula there. Okay, uh, with the zonal harmonics, uh, there's an explicit formula, this horrible looking thing, but actually this is very useful. <laughs> we will be able to use this uh, formula, actually. And uh, there's also a connection with Gegenbauer or ultraspherical polynomials here that will also come out uh, later on. Well, uh, we can write this as a sum like this, starting with k equal to zero, and then that depends uh, only on the dot product of x and y. Well, this is just a dot visual, the inner product of Rn. And uh, let's call this coefficient am. We will need that also because uh, zonal harmonics are good if you are using the inner product with respect to the uh, L2 space on the sphere. But uh, for this talk, if you divide ZMs by this AMs and call them by XM, these turn out to be more useful because this quantity here is very much like the quantity here uh, in the kernel of the Dura Iverson space. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and then also, uh, the, the well, because I use the letter X here, I call them zonal harmonics or whatever. <laughs> 
Uh, and these are uh, dominated by one, uh, which is uh, quite useful as well. So these are uh, these turn out to be the uh, the equivalent to this quantity in the holomorphic setting. Uh, and also, uh, it turns out that the, if you if you look at the uh, not the harmonic homogeneous polynomials, but holomorphic homogeneous polynomials, and look at their uh, reproducing kernel. Uh, what you obtain is not exactly this, but with some coefficients. Uh, and here also, ZMs turn out to be with some coefficients, but we don't want the coefficients. <laughs> That's why we divide by AM here. Okay, I have to continue. Uh, uh, now, the, at this point, we can define the shift operators. And uh, this, this equality here, uh, you know, it takes the, uh, uh, you know, th this formula really multiplies the, uh, uh, this quantity by ZJ. So multiplication by ZJ in the holomorphic sense is actually the J shift operator. Now, uh, uh, we can do the same thing. We can imitate the same formula in the harmonic setting. Replace the, the inner product in the complex inner product of ZW to the power M by the this XMs, XMs, the sonal harmonics. Uh, okay, look at the uh, uh, not the nth one, but the M plus uh, first one, differentiate it with respect to the second variable, not the first one, uh, because here the you know the multiplication here is by zj but the differentiation here is with respect to this second other variable in the j component so imitate the same thing and this is uh, actually we define this as the shift operator from the uh, harmonic homogeneous polynomials of degree m and that goes to the harmonic homogeneous polynomials of degree m plus one and we can extend it to all of hm by linearity and also uh, since this is a reproducing kernel, the finite linear combinations of these quantities with different y's is actually dense in uh, in HM. Uh, so, uh, and moreover, uh, uh, the L2 uh, space can be written as an orthogonal direct sum of the HM. So you can extend it to a, to a large class of uh, functions, in fact. Uh, Later on, we will have uh, better uh, Hilbert spaces that are subspaces of this. So, uh, 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 so let's just leave them as defined only on HM for the time being. Okay. Uh, well, for for us, uh, the only inner product so far is the, the L2 inner product of uh, uh, on the unit sphere. And with respect to this inner product, we can actually calculate the adjoints. They turn out to be quantities like this here. This partial derivative symbol is actually a differentiation to the with, just, with respect to jth variable. I didn't want to really write the variable here. Okay, if there's an x here, this is partial derivative with respect to xj. Yeah. And you know, partial derivatives commute with each other. Uh, so sj adjoints commute with each other, and therefore sj's commute with each other. Okay, uh, well, this is a strange way to define shift operators, but then we have to, uh, uh, we need to connect to the real world. I mean, uh, we have to really uh, also think about multiplication by the corn variables like this. Uh, okay, but you know, multiplication by coordinate variables alone doesn't give us any harmonic function, so we have to really uh, look at the harmonic subspace, maybe project onto a harmonic subspace, and those things are also known. Okay, uh, this Axel Bourdain Remy is the uh, book by the three authors, uh, uh, Harmonic Function Theory. Its fifth chapter is very useful actually here. A lot of the information I'm talking about, uh, you know, these uh, zonal harmonics, uh, the explicit formula come from there. Okay, these are not uh, extremely new stuff, but the, the presentation in X Bourdain Remy is pretty good. Uh, okay, if you have a, a homogeneous polynomial of degree M, not necessarily harmonic, and if K is, uh, you know, uh, the integer part of M over two, then there are unique 
uh, harmonic homogeneous polynomials, um, um minus two. I mean, it goes in steps of two here, uh, such that PM can be represented like this. Okay, we'd like to pick the UM here. This is the harmonic part of PM. And that's a projection. And there's an explicit formula in the book. It's given like this. Okay, the, the formula is a little different, but n is equal to two. Logarithm uh, is here. Instead of having nothing here, you have to be inserted. I mean, logarithm is inserted. CM also is a constant uh, that depends on n as well. Uh, its form is a little different when n is equal to two, as opposed to when n is greater than or equal to three. Uh, and k, of course, uh, what the, the complicated part here. Uh, well, before the k, let me, uh, of course, uh, uh, PM of the partial symbol means, you know, uh, PM is a polynomial with n variables. Uh, uh, for each variable, we insert the partial derivative symbol, and therefore there's a complicated uh, differentiation operator here. On top of that, in order to obtain a harmonic function, we have to apply the Kelvin transform, which has this form. This x over modulus x squared uh, is really a reflection in the unit sphere. So from the inside of the unit sphere, uh, we go to the outside of the unit sphere. And when n is equal to two, it's, uh, this transform is actually much simpler. This term is not there. Uh, but what is important is uh, uh, on the unit sphere, Kelvin transform is just the identity. Inverse of the Kelvin transform is itself. A function is harmonic if and only if its Kelvin transform is harmonic. Of course, uh, what we have here is uh, if you have a function that is harmonic in the inside the unit in the unit ball, uh, its Kelvin transform is a function that is harmonic outside the unit sphere. Okay, but you know this formula uh, uh, is. Uh, uh, here X is, I didn't really write it, but X is actually a point in the unit ball here and also here as well. I mean, in, everywhere on this page, X is a point in the unit ball, unit ball of RN. Okay, now let's try to, uh, uh, okay, please ignore the theorem five. It's just there to uh, indicate that uh, some results that are really, obvious in the holomorphic setting becomes a major theorem uh, in the harmonic setting. You know, if you start with a constant function one and if, if you apply shift again and again and again, uh, well, you get the polynomial, uh, of course, whatever polynomial you're using here. This is obvious with holomorphic functions, uh, but uh, with harmonic functions, it's not so obvious, but this is like a, a digression. So, I really want to concentrate on the remaining three results here. Okay, the, the theorem, uh, one of the major results in the paper uh, in our work is this. Uh, the shift operator that we defined like this above uh, can actually be uh, uh, written as the combination of uh, uh, multiplication by the j uh, coordinate variable followed by projection onto the harmonic uh, subspace. So this is really a triplet separator. Uh, you know, multiplication is not enough. You have to uh, project also the suitable uh, uh, function space. <clears throat> it, this, this theorem is quite long. And actually, uh, it depends on this particular lemma. Uh, because we are going to apply here the uh, projection onto the harmonic subspace, uh, we are going to apply these things. Okay, we have to take a lot of derivatives and then apply Kelvin transform. And here, uh, the action of the derivatives is uh, represented this way. This is a very technical lemma. Its proof takes like at least two pages of dense calculations. <laughs> And uh, this, uh, the, the formulas I'm writing here is for n greater than or equal to three because there's the modulus of x two minus to the power two minus n here. Well, when n is equal to two, you have to replace it by a logarithm of the absolute value of x or length of x. Uh, uh, and uh, on top of this, if you apply the Kelvin transform, uh, one gets the 
those xonal harmonics, uh, as we uh, call it. And CMs are the same CMs that you see here in the formula for the rejection. And as a corollary of this, uh, we have a seemingly a new result. I mean, we couldn't find any of the standard uh, uh, references on uh, uh, special functions. Start with the function one, apply Kelvin transform, apply this operator, uh, apply Kelvin transform again, etc. What one gets is a is the Gegenbauer polynomials. This uh, property of Gegenbauer polynomials. Well, Gegenbauer polynomials is not a surprise. I mean, the zonal harmonics, and therefore these extends are essentially Gegenbauer polynomials. Uh, but uh, the left hand side is seems new to us. Uh, and when n is equal to two, instead of Gegenbauer polynomials, one has the uh, Chebyshev polynomials uh, of TM here. Anyway, uh, I don't want to bore you with technicalities too much, but uh, at least uh, this theorem uh, should, uh, uh, I mean, worth, is worth remembering. I mean, SJ defined this way turns out to be multiplication by the foreign variables followed by projection onto the harmonic uh, subspace. Okay, now we have to, from there, we have to go back to the, uh, go to the Hilbert spaces that we are going to work on. Okay, uh, let me go back to the first page. Uh, here, is that, yeah. Uh, you see the, uh, uh, the, the reproducing kernel of the dual arvison space can be written in this form as an infinite sum here. And there are a lot of uh, Hilbert spaces like the dual arvison space. Uh, you know, I call them Bergman Bessel spaces. They have coefficients here in their uh, reproducing kernel. And, you know, a lot of them have uh, one minus inner product of Z and W to some power. And th those powers give you something out here, the coefficients. And that's what we do actually here as well. Starting with XMs, uh, multiply by suitable constants and uh, those constants should be to satisfy this quantity. This is actually root test. I'm, I'm picking VMs in such a way that this infinite sum uh, converges absolutely and uniformly on the uh, compact subsets of the uh, unit ball when X and Y lie in the unit ball, each of them. Okay, so uh, these functions are harmonic in, in, in the X variable and also in the Y variable. And these are uh, uh, positive definite functions and beta M's are positive, stick to positive, and the zero to one in fact is equal to one. So this sum is also a positive definite function. So these are actually reproducing kernels of some Hilbert spaces. And I showed Hilbert space with this script G. Uh, the reproducing kernel is straight G sub beta, and this is script G sub beta for the space. And little h actually for, uh, is the space of all harmonic functions on a unit ball. Well, uh, yeah. yes, uh, well here, uh, this is this the repetition of a theorem in, in uh, classical books on uh, reproducing kernels like Ando, uh, uh, all the, uh, the the Hilbert space here coincides with the space of harmonic functions with homogeneous expansion like this, uh, and the norm in the in the Hilbert space uh, is given by the sum here. In fact, the norm in the Hilbert space is related to the norm in the uh, uh, L two space of the uh, uh, unit sphere uh, with the coefficients. That, uh, that I've been using from the very beginning. You know, this is the AM is the leading coefficient in the expression for ZM, the zonal harmonics, and beta M's are the same beta M's here. And of course, there's the inner product there. And here, uh, every harmonic function can be uh, written as an infinite sum like this, just because of this fact here. Where did I write it? Uh, because of this fact here. Really. Okay, now the important thing is to choose the beta M's 
in a good way so that uh, we get uh, interesting spaces here. And one way of doing it is uh, using these uh, coefficients. Where do I get these coefficients? I really get them from the uh, uh, Bergman spaces, really. I mean, if you replace little n over two by capital N or something like that, and when q is uh, more than minus one, actually, uh, the Bergman spaces, the, the Hilbert Bergman spaces are uh, what one gets, or their reproducing kernel, and therefore the Bergman spaces as well. And the notation here is uh, uses the Pochhammer symbol, which is the ratio of two gamma functions. Uh, and when Q is equal to minus N over two, uh, the numerator and the denominator are exactly the same, and these beta M's are all equal to one. And uh, that's, uh, that's where we get uh, uh, simplified uh quantities uh let me go back here so all these quantities are one therefore we just add up the xms uh and xms have uh, expansions like this so there's a finite sum here and then an infinite sum over m and the first term of this uh, inf infinite sum is really uh, one over one minus x in a product y which is like the you know if if you replace this inner product of Rm with the inner product of Cn and ignore the re remaining part, this is the reproducing kernel of the classical uh, dual Arvison space. And uh, we label it by this G cup, I think. Uh, and uh, this will be the uh, harmonic dual Arvison space. We'll see in a minute. Okay. Well, earlier uh, with some other uh, friends of mine, we studied uh, another family of Hilbert spaces. Well, this is a talk on harmonic function spaces. So the Poisson curl has to make an appearance somewhere. This is what it does. So these are a little different from the beta M's here. Okay. Uh, these are the gamma M's. Uh, the spaces are here called uh, B to Q. B for Bergman or Besov, uh, either way, and the reproducing kernels obtained by these coefficients instead of betas here. I mean, I'm just replacing the beta amps here by uh, gamma amps now. And uh, uh, the positive kernel is here when Q is equal to minus one. It's the reproducing kernel of the harmonic out of space. And if Q is more than minus one, we get the weighted Bergman spaces. And if Q is stick less than one, there are the harmonic Bergman Bessel spaces or Bergman Sobolev spaces. Well, there's the harmonic Richter space. Well, it turns out that uh, from the operator point, operator theoretic point of view, this whole family is not very interesting. Uh, for questions like uh, Bergman projection and so on, uh, there are, there's a lot of things that have been done in this paper here. Uh, but uh, in this talk, we'll, we'll not be interested in these. Uh, we will be interested in the previous family. This is the new family. <clears throat> okay, some properties of uh, shift operators. Uh, uh, well, uh, you can calculate the joints with respect to the, uh, the these uh, Hilbert spaces uh, easily, actually, just because if you look at the inner products here, they are really uh, weighted infinite sums of inner products of the, uh, the, the terms in the homogeneous expansion. Uh, 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 yeah, inner product, or norm with respect to the L2 space. So since because of this connection, it's easy to obtain the joints when U is a harmonic homogeneous polynomial. And uh, when we uh, restrict down further uh, to, so this, uh, this cup here on top of G corresponds to Q equal to minus N over two. Okay, in that case, uh, Shifts uh, can also be written as an in, in integral form like this, using homogeneity uh, of the polynomials here. And this formula actually is exactly the same formula used by Alpay, Shapiro, and Volok uh, in an earlier paper on 
on shift operators. Well, this is the, of course, the backward shift. Uh, uh, so th these are strong indications that uh, what we're doing uh, uh, is actually is, uh, is actually going to give us some uh, Dury Iverson space type thing. And it turns out that uh, one can do calculations like this apply, okay, this, this dot here represents, you know, uh, the, apply the J uh, S beta star and then S beta, uh, the J S beta, and then add up uh, uh, as J runs from one to N here, okay, as in the dot product of. Uh, uh, the points in Rn. Uh, so you, there's a sum here from j equal to one to n, and this is the formula for the uh, shift the adjoint. And uh, if we apply the shift further or, or there, uh, what we obtain is uh, you know shift had the formula with the projection on the harmonic space, and what we get back is uh, um essentially. But you know, in this very special case, uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, before that, yeah, if uh, 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 let's see, if these coefficients are bounded, then the uh, then this combination here is bounded, and that means that the individual uh, uh, operators are also bounded, and. Uh, this boundedness holds for all the ones, all the betas that depend on Q, these betas here. For these betas uh, that depend on Q as Q runs from minus infinity to plus infinity, uh, for each of them separately, the shift operators are actually bounded. And uh, when I uh, look at the difference of these from the identity, I get a, we get a formula like this. This is for you in one of those silver spaces. And then uh, uh, when the betas are all equal to one in the S cup case, what we get is just U zero. And this is in, again, another indication of a dual Iverson space. <clears throat> okay, now, uh, uh, so we define the shift operators. We define the Hilbert spaces as well. Now back to, to uh, get to the, uh, yeah, for Neumann inequality, we have to look at row contractions. Now, let me make the full definition here. If we start with a commuting uh, m tuple of uh, operators on a Hilbert space, uh, this com this tuple is called a row contraction if this is satisfied. So, as a tuple, if it's a contraction, really. Uh, uh, well, every uh, row contraction is actually individual terms here are contractions, but not the other way around. Uh, an equivalent condition for a row contraction is that this difference is a positive operator. And uh, if that is a positive operator, one can look at a square root, and that's called a defect operator. Well, this is the defect operator used by Arvison in uh, some of his papers. Uh, most other people probably use this uh, as a defect uh, when the T star and T, the positions of T star and T are interchanged. I think most operator theorists use T star dot T here rather than T T star. <clears throat> okay. Uh, <clears throat> Yes, uh, from uh, what we have here, this difference is actually a diagonal operator. So this difference is positive. It's, uh, it's a positive operator if the coefficients are here are, are positive. And that happens when these quantities are less than one. That means betas are increasing. Uh, that's an if and only condition. And in the particular case when beta depends on Q, in which case I use the notation SQ for a shift operator. That happens when Q is greater than or equal to minus N over two. We call it our candidate for the Drury Iverson space is when Q is actually equal to that. So that's an extremal end in this category of spaces. And uh, of course, when betas are all one, all these terms are gone. And this, uh, this is the formula what this is the, what we have actually. And in fact, the defect that is also that. 
<clears throat> okay, uh, now comes the uh, hard part. <laughs> uh, we need to uh, uh, Okay, uh, the, the style of proof uh, we follow is actually the one used by Arbison in that 1998 paper in which uh, she did a lot of work on the Dury Arbison space. And uh, there, this particular map on bounded linear operators uh, on the Hilbert space are used. Okay, different people call it different things. I just call it J sub T of beta. And uh, but this is for holomorphic again uh, in the holomorphic setting. Now, uh, if we are in the harmonic setting, we have to go all the way back to the earlier slides, and I will go back to the earlier slides. Okay, now look at this thing. Okay, where are, where are we now? Let's see. Okay, uh, in the holomorphic setting. Uh, uh, it's like replacing the Z uh, here uh, by an operator TJ and W by the adjoint of TJ. Uh, and uh, inserting a B between the two uh, operators here. In the harmonic setting, this kind of a thing exists in the middle here x dot y to the power of different powers. But there are thing, other things around. So you can, in fact, uh, insert things in between as well. And we are going to use this formula now uh, for uh, uh, to use it in the harmonic setting. Okay, uh, yes, the middle thing uh, is uh, the JT used here. Well, one nice thing about J sub T is uh, its powers are well defined. You can just take the power again and again and again by applying it uh, like this. But with the VMs that are used for harmonics, uh, you cannot really do that. I mean, M is not does not represent the power here. It just uh, you just look at the that sonal harmonics and replace the middle part by uh, the JMs here. Okay, this is uh, 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 yeah when and when the uh, operator B is here the identity. Uh, the JT turn to the power L turns out to be just TT star to that power. And uh, uh, Agler called it hereditary uh, polynomials and so on. Uh, and when the B here is again identity, we get something, uh, we, we actually get the extends sonal harmonics with uh, the first variables are exchanged with TJ and the second variable is exchanged by TJ star. Now, uh, this quantity is just too complicated to deal with uh, in this full generality. So uh, we need some subcategories in which those are simpler. And here, how we do it. And now look at the shift operators, uh, S to beta and so on. Uh, uh, well, uh, these are actually the joints. Uh, Adjoints from the Hilbert spaces. Now, if you apply shift adjoints uh, twice, well, every joint is really a, a partial derivative as we calculated earlier. Let me show it to you. Yeah. Shift up, uh, shift adjoints are backward shifts are actually derivatives. And if we apply derivative twice, we get, uh, uh, we got the Laplace in here actually. If um is harmonic polynomial, uh, it's Laplace is equal to zero. So now we apply it. Uh, uh, so the shift operators satisfy a certain property, and we call the operator tuples that satisfy exactly the same uh, property harmonic type, for lack of any better expression. If uh, t star dot t star is equal to zero or equal to t. Uh, t dot t is equal to that. In other words, if t1, t1 plus t2, t2 plus dot 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 tn, tn uh, adds up to zero. And then uh, what happens is uh, for such a case, 
The only term here that survives is when k is equal to zero. Okay. This term is zero when k is not zero. This term is also zero for a harmonic type uh, tuple. So in such a case, uh, the only term here that survives is when k is equal to zero. And in such a case, the VMs turn out to be exactly the same as JMs, which is good because, uh, we, I mean, uh, there are already early results that say that, you know, when T is a row contraction, and when uh, VM is this JM, uh, uh, this limit as M tends to infinity exists in a strong operator topology, and uh, the limiting function uh, is uh, dominated uh, by I, and it's a positive operator. And when this limiting function operator is uh, zero, T is called pure, et cetera, et cetera. And in the case of uh, when T is the shift operator on the model space that we call the harmonic Euler-Arvison space, uh, the uh, uh, action of that uh, with any M uh, is like this, which is quite simple, uh, as opposed to other uh, Hilbert spaces. And uh, we have the theorem, which is a step in proving a von Neumann inequality. It's a dilation type result. You can, uh, if you have a, if you have a harmonic type row contraction, then we can uh, have a different another fun operator. Uh, 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 on the tensor product of these spaces, where G cup is again the the harmonic Euler-Arvison space and uh, uh, we have all these formulas uh, if t is pure this quantity is zero and therefore l l star is equal to identity actually i should really have a dot here if i want to follow my own notation uh, but you know even without a dot here this makes sense uh, this is the technical result again, uh, uh, but you know, uh, starting with a harmonic type row contraction on Hilbert space, we uh, somehow uh, get in, introduce uh, the Dürer Arvison space here, and dt here is really the uh, defect operator. Where was that? Uh, let's see. Yeah, def this is the dt applied on h. So we look at the image of h under dt. Well, what other uh, kind of uh, subcategories can we look at? One of the categories when uh, T is self adjoint, when every TJ star is equal to TJ. Uh, that, in other words, I'm trying to simplify here this uh, big expression here. When every TJ is equal to TJ star, then this simplifies when uh, B, uh, this quantity actually, when B is actually the identity map. In such a case, uh, well, for the harmonic type, the VM turns out to be just JM. In the self-adjoint uh, case, VM is uh, JM multiplied by some constant, the same constant that appear again and again in the stock. And, uh, Theorem 15 is just uh, the version of theorem 13 for self adjoint So these are almost the same theorem, except that you know here you have harmonic type, and here we have self adjoint That's the difference. <clears throat> but I don't want to spend too much time on this. It's just it's a technical result, and uh, for the purposes of the story, it's a technical result, and uh, uh, I want to move on. Uh, Actually, yeah, this is my last slide. Uh, okay. Uh, if you have a norm on harmonic polynomials, uh, this is derived from an inner product with, with respect to orthogonality in L2, it's called contractive. If the shift operator is a row contraction. So all the, uh, uh, then we'll look at, uh, so basically uh, we look at uh, uh, norms on harmonic polynomials and basically also on the, uh, the Hilbert spaces G sub beta. And uh, uh, 
you see, let me go back there. Uh, let's see, where is that? Uh, yeah, the, the, the shift operators on the, uh, on these uh, G sub Q spaces, they're all contraction, if and only if Q uh, is greater or equal to minus N over two. And uh, in principle, we can have other inner products on harmonic polynomials, uh, like the ones on, on the G spaces. Uh, uh, and uh, like those, the uh, inner product can be derived from, an, uh, from the inner product of uh, L2 on the uh, unit sphere. Uh, it turns out that if you have a contractive norm on a Hilbert space like that, then, uh, well, I'm sorry, on uh, harmonic polynomials, this, this script H corresponds to harmonic polynomials. Uh, then uh, uh, that norm is less than or equal to the norm uh, on the, the our model space, uh, harmonic Gruyarvison space times the norm of a constant uh, function one. So uh, this is about this is a maximality uh, result. I mean, the norm uh, the norm of the uh, uh, the norm on G cup is maximal actually among all contractive norms on harmonic polynomials. And from uh, theorem sixteen to theorem seventeen, uh, it's not a, a difficult task. If you have a, a harmonic type row contraction. I have a space H, uh, and if U is a harmonic polynomial, then uh, we have a von Neumann type inequality. U of a tuple, U is a harmonic uh, function of n variables, and uh, if we apply U to the uh, the tuple T that is harmonic type and row contraction, then the norm of that is dominated by uh, the same you apply to the shift operators on a Dura-Arvison space uh, and, and the norm. Unfortunately, this is only for harmonic type. Although up to here, uh, we had, you know, uh, dual uh, paths, you know, one for harmonic type, one for south joint. We don't have this theorem for south joint or for more general row contractions. Okay, this is the uh, promised von Neumann uh, inequality where U is actually a harmonic polynomial rather than a holomorphic polynomial. And actually I finished with that result indicating some of my basic references. Uh, and this, the red one is the uh, paper that this talk is based on that appeared recently in Journal of Functional Analysis. And, and I thank you for your attention. I think I should stop here. Thank you very much. Um, are there questions? I, I uh, cannot see the audience now, but uh, uh, are there questions? If somebody needs to be un unmuted, uh, I think, oh, how do I do this? Well, I can, uh, can I, Daniel? No, yes, I, of course. Yeah, I want to thank you because the talk was really very interesting. And um, it, it's just a curiosity, and maybe for future projects, uh, the relation that there is with this theory and the theory of uh, monogenic functions, because I see a lot of uh, uh, similarity with the theory of functions in the kernel of the Dirac operator. Okay. I don't know what are the connections, because I see that also a paper with Alpay, yeah, yeah, Shapiro, the, the, the is say, mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it, it's possible. Uh, the thing is, I don't, I do not know monogenic functions really. Uh, so uh, I think the, the ideas are there, and uh, yeah. probably uh, if uh, you can apply the same kind of uh, reasoning to uh, shift operators on other types of spaces as well. Yeah. Because one can form n tuples of operators associated with the units of a Clifford algebra. And then there is also a machinery there. I don't know if von Neumann estimates their holds or not, but it is a very interesting topic, absolutely. 
It's just yeah. generally bad. It's just my information about <laughs> monogenic functions or Clifford algebras is uh, almost non-existent. So <laughs> I can't really tell anything uh, about that. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Thank you. For more questions? Well, otherwise, thank you again. Thank you. Uh, and um, so I will uh, close the, the session. And thank you to Guy for a very great talk. So thank you. So I guess.